if I were to ask a, a typical consumer what the most harmful ingredient in the Western diet is, I likely I'd get the answer sugar. But I want to tell you right off that what they're talking about is simple sugars like in white table sugar, honey, molasses, maple syrup, these simple sugars, they can cause some problems. They're not health food. You know, eat them in sufficient quantities. What happens is they end up uh, in your mouth and they cause certain bacteria to grow that rot your teeth. These sugars provide calories and so don't encourage weight loss, even though sugar is not turned into fat readily. These sugars are empty calories, so you get no other nutrients, no vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein, nothing else but just pure white sugar, so they're empty calories. And in sensitive people, people who have a tendency towards high fats in their blood, high triglycerides, they'll raise triglyceride levels. So with that in mind, uh, should you blame sugar for all the atrocities that we suffer for that you see in people who live on the Western diet? Absolutely not. You know, sugar is uh, minor on the list concerning uh, harmful aspects of the Western diet. I'd have to say if I was gonna list them in order of damage, I'd probably list, and it's artificial what I'm gonna tell you now, because they're all kind of mixed up. You know, you can't really separate one from another, but let's just try. I would say fat is probably the most toxic when it comes to causing diabetes, obesity, promoting cancer, damaging the arteries, causing bleeding problems. Yeah, if you're gonna pick on the components of a food plan, let's go fat first. Then I would go protein. You know, there's never been a case of protein deficiency ever reported. Let's just start there. How about problems of protein excess? Well, protein excess, it damages the kidneys and the liver. These are the organs that process this extra protein and you overwork them with the amount of protein typical to the American diet. The uh, protein uh, consists of amino acids. So you deliver a high acid load to the body. That acid has to be buffered or you die. The primary buffering system of the body is the bones. So the bones dissolve and you create a condition of weak bones, commonly known as osteoporosis. And that bone material ends up in your kidneys, solidifies, and gives you kidney stones. So protein, I have to say, is number two. Number three would be, well, maybe refined foods. And then you, of course, do a lot of things. You add oils, you add all kinds of components that you think are important to be in the food. And most importantly, you take away from the dietary fiber. So I'd say if you're gonna isolate components of the diet, probably lack of fiber would be next. Then would come salt and sugar. The, the, uh, the harm to the body from salt and sugar for most of the population is minor and significant. You know, those with extremes in both nutrients are gonna get into problems, but you really have to push your limits to do that. Uh, the other important thing I want to tell you about salt and sugar, and you ask about sugar, refined sugar, is it will often make the difference as to whether you eat your food or not, because you want it to taste good. And the primary pleasurable tastes are on the tip of the tongue there, salt and sugar. So you want to get your oatmeal down in the morning, you add a little bit of brown sugar to the surface. Likewise, that rice dish that you really enjoy, likely most of you, especially when you start to change your diet, are going to enjoy a little bit of salt on the surface of the food. Yeah, tending towards a lower sodium and lower sugar diet, that's important. But learning to like the food is even more important. Now, let me just end this conversation by telling you about Walter Kempner at Duke University. Walter Kempner was at Duke for seven decades. For two decades, the rice diet supported Duke University primarily, a big part of the, of the university in Durham, North Carolina. The rice diet uh, was uh, brought to Duke University by Walter Kempner. The rice diet consists of white rice, fruit, fruit juice, and table sugar. And, and table sugar can amount to as much as 2,000 calories in people who need to gain weight. White sugar is part of the diet. Now, this diet is used to treat people who are very ill. I call it the diet for the nearly dead. It's an extreme approach that I use on rare occasions, but it's valuable when I do need it. This kind of diet reverses severe heart disease, reverses kidney disease, takes people with morbid, deadly hypertension and puts them down to normal blood pressure. 
that's on a diet that is 93% sugar. Yeah, it's not all white sugar, it's rice too, which is sugar in many people's and most people's minds and correctly is so. You know, the carbohydrates, uh, they have to be complex when it's present in rice and simple when it's present in table sugar. 93% of the calories on the, on the Kempner diet come from table sugar, or excuse me, come from sugar in general, white rice and, and table sugar. So uh, you need to put things in perspective. Uh, yes, you want to tend towards a perfect diet, but you know, they've heard the saying that perfection in the, may be in the way of success. You don't want that to happen. You want to like your food. You want to make major shifts in your diet that really make a difference that will cause you to enjoy life more, feel better and live longer. And those major shifts are in the, in the components of the food which are centered around meat and dairy, you want to instead switch to, switch to rice, corn, potatoes. And if you need, at least when you start out, to make them taste more familiar, then sprinkle a little salt, a little sugar on the surface of the food. And in time, in time, you'll be perfect. I'm Dr. John McDougall. Thank you for listening.